Surprised by Joy by William Wordsworth, 1770 to 1850. Surprised by joy, impatient as the wind, I turned to share the transport. Oh, with whom? But thee, long buried in the silent tomb, that spot which no vicissitude can find. Love, faithful love, recalled thee to my mind. But how could I forget thee? Through what power, even for the least division of an hour, have I been so beguiled as to be blind to my most grievous loss? That thought's return was the worst pang that sorrow ever bore. Save one, only one, when I stood forlorn, knowing my heart's best treasure was no more that neither present time nor years unborn could to my sight that heavenly face restore. Okay, this poem is by William Wordsworth. Um, normally he writes poems about um, the beauties of nature and maybe critical comments uh, about society. Now, he came from Cumberland and um, he was the poet laureate uh, to Queen Victoria. Now this poem is about loss, about grieving, about be the sadness of, be of uh, losing someone that you love dearly, that somebody has died and so that's somebody that you really love. And the title, Surprised by Joy, Will you, uh, Wordsworth here is saying that um, he's surprised to feel joy in the middle of his grief and mourning. Now, Wordsworth lost his daughter his, and his son soon afterwards while they were both small children. And he um, this... Uh, upset him very greatly as you might imagine and um, he has forgotten about this grief for just a moment and he's happy about something that's happened and he's surprised that he can actually feel like that um, and then he goes on to be to be incredibly sad again and to remember the death and to he's saying that grief in a situation like that will always win over in the end against any happiness surprised by joy impatient as the wind i turned to share the transport so he's been surprised he suddenly has a joyful moment and he's impatient as the wind he really really wants to I turn to share the transport. He wants to share this happiness with someone. He's been transported by joy to his mind is in another place. And, uh, and then he thinks, oh, with whom but thee? So who am I going to share this, this joy with? Ah, well, of course, I want to share it with you. And here he remembers the death long buried in the silent tomb. So then he remembers this dead person who has been, who died a long time ago and has been buried in the tomb for a long time. That spot which no vicissitude can find. So um, let's see, I think here he's talking about um, that the happiness which um, he has suddenly found and it's he, he believed that it was impossible to feel joy uh, ever again after um, the child's death and the vicissitudes the ups and downs of life yeah the things that happen love 
faithful love recalled thee to my mind. So my love for you made me think of you, made me think that I wanted to uh, share this with you. And then he's really, really angry with himself. But how could I forget thee? He'd been happy for a moment. He'd been joyful. And he's saying, but how could I forget you? That's impossible. Yeah? Through what power? Even for the least division of an hour. So how is it possible that I uh, forgot my mourning for you, my sadness about your death, um, even for the least division of an hour so even for the smallest part of an hour even for a few minutes yeah and i think he's he he feels angry with himself that this person who he has loved and has died um he can't believe that he's forgotten them even for a few minutes have i been so beguiled as to be, as to be blind to my most grievous loss so what has happened to me? Have, have I been bewitched so that for even for a short time I didn't think about my, my, the saddest loss in my life, the saddest thing that ever happened? That thought's return was the worst pang that sorrow ever bore. So he's gone suddenly from being joyful yeah, his thought to returning to think about his grief for the death of this child. And he says that going back from being joyful to remembering the, the loss and the death as if it was for the first time. And he says this was the worst pang, the worst pain that sorrow ever bore. So this was the worst thing that had ever happened to him, that made him uh, the saddest he had ever been. So he's saying that he, he's returning to a state of sadness um, from that state of joy. And it's just the most painful thing that's ever happened to him. Save one, only one. So, ah, it's not the saddest thing that hap has, has ever happened to him. There's something even worse. Save one, only one, only one pang, only one pain. When I stood forlorn, upset, sad, lost, knowing my heart's treasure was no more. So knowing that the person that I loved best, the treasure of my heart, the person, the child that I loved more than anything, was dead. That neither present time nor years unborn could to my sight, sight that heavenly face restore. And knowing that this person, this child was dead and that the present nor the future years unborn, years that haven't been born yet, could restore, could bring back that heavenly face, could bring back to reality, could make this person alive again. Um, and th he's saying that that was the most painful thing that had ever happened to him. Yeah, so he, it's, he's gone back into this state of mourning and unhappiness. And for a moment he thinks, this is the biggest pain I've ever, ever, ever felt. Except for actually when um, the child died. So this, po he, this poem begins with happiness and it ends with great sadness, great depression, great upset, deep, deep grief. So it's a very sad poem. If you enjoyed the video, give it a rating, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you soon. Bye for now. Surprised by Joy by William Wordsworth.